Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Violet and today I'm going to be showing you how I style my shag. So I'm going to be showing you two different ways. The first way is when I get right out of the shower and how I blow dry and style my hair. And then also how I do kind of a full revamp when my hair is a couple days dirty. So if you have not already, make sure to like and subscribe and let's just hop right into it. Well, hello and welcome to my bathroom. You guys have not been here in quite a second, and that's because I've left my hair up to the professionals now. Um, I'm sure it appreciates it, but. So I just washed my hair, and when I wash my hair, I wash it twice. I try to do a double wash to make sure all the dirt is out, and as well as products. This is the shampoo I use right here. It's from Sally's, it's about 20 bucks, and I go through it in a year, so I think it's pretty good for how much I use it for. Um, I only wash my hair once a week, so it takes me about a year to go through this tub. My towel is about to fall off, so I'm just gonna get started in this tutorial. So in detangling your hair when it's wet, it's really important to use a wide tooth comb. I have a wet brush. I've had this forever. I actually bought it at like the checkout register at Kohl's a zillion years ago. So start at your tips and work your way up. I'm going to use the viewfinder as a mirror since I don't have one. All right, so it's combed out for the most part. I'm going to go in with this generic conditioner. It's compared to the Paul Mitchell leave-in conditioner. I use about a dime size amount of that and I will just disperse this onto the ends of my hair. I don't like conditioning my hair in the shower because I feel like it weighs down my hair a lot. I personally have very thin hair so it's kind of easier just to do it this way so I can manage the product. I mean, I'm not sure if that is actually true, but that's just how I feel. Then I will use this Super Skinny Serum. It makes your hair super silky smooth. This is by Paul Mitchell. I'm again just going in on the ends of my hair. I'm just gonna brush through it one more time to help move around the product. Before I blow dry my hair, I'm going to go in with Not Your Mother's Beat the Heat Thermal Spray. And I'm mainly going to focus this up at the top because I don't like to blow dry the ends of my hair since they've already been through a lot. And again, just dispersing the product. When blow drying my hair, I focus first on my bangs since they're already pretty dry and they're the most important to this look. I just pull back my hair and a scrunchier clip just so I can focus on this since a lot of my other hair likes to move around when I have the blow dryer going. Currently I'm using this cheap regular blow dryer I got from Ulta. I think it was literally the cheapest one there. It is a Revlon 1875 West Iconic Ceramic and then I have this on it. I'm also gonna go in with my brush and round below my bangs just because I'm really into a really short Betty bang and my bangs have gotten a little long. So by curling it, I can kind of mimic a shorter bang. All right, so they're dry for the most part, but towards the end of my bangs, towards the sides of my head, I'm going to blow dry them outward a little more, just because when I style the rest of my hair, I kind of like it to have that feathered pullback look. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with how my bangs look at the moment, just because after I do blow dry my hair, I usually go in with a flat iron and fix it up a little more because it's easier for me to use a flat iron than it is to kind of work with this blow dryer because I'm kind of new to blow drying my hair. So I do have a shag cut and I do struggle with getting volume in my hair because it is pretty short. So I'm just going to focus on blow drying the regrowth area towards the scalp of my hair. I'm not too worried about getting the ends of my hair dry just because I'm going to style it later and I kind of like it to be more air dried. Plus it helps the health of my hair. So when blow drying, I will blow dry the hair the opposite of where it is going to lay. This will just create volume in the hair. 
If you don't need to worry about volume, then you can just blow your dryer hair regularly or just skip this step. So most of my root scalp area is dry. I'm going to let the rest of my hair air dry just because I don't feel like there's a need for me to fully blow dry my hair and it helps with damage control. So here's my hair halfway dry. It's about wet from here down. So I'm gonna let it air dry. It usually takes less than 30 minutes. So I'll be back to style it then. So it's been a little bit now. My hair is completely dry. So here's what I look like with dry hair spectacular right so i usually like to have a little bit more of a wavier look so i'm gonna go ahead and use my flat iron to kind of smooth it up a little here's my flat iron i've had it for about an eon and a half so i have some really short hairs on top as most people should when they have a shag and i just take it twist it and do a little bit of a wavy curl on top just so there's a bit more motion and pulled back featherness. I only do it on like the top and the sides when I am being lazy. Another part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I do my whole head when I'm styling it. Like when I wanna curl my shag. And then I'll just pull some hair and curl a little on the bottom. I'm probably gonna spend no more than three minutes doing this just because i don't know how people put any more effort into their hair if you don't want me now you have no love you could definitely alternate the curls if that is more of a desired fact but for me i just kind of like to do everything not facing or going outwards so here's this side done you can tell a little bit of a difference this is just kind of flat and this just has a little more texture and movement. So I'm gonna do the side real fast and come back. So this is just the flat iron curls. I curled it away from my face, blow dried my hair, and did my bank. So here is what basic level number one looks like. If you want, if you or if you have texturing spray, I would definitely put that in. Maybe some hairspray. I don't have any of those at the moment, but my hair doesn't have a problem with staying curled or styled. So if that is an issue for you, I'd recommend using some sort of hairspray or gel. So here is my basic look. And next up is how I fully style it when I want to have it super curly, super voluminous. So right now I am on day four hair, I guess. Yeah, day four. So my hair is not too bad. But for the sake of this video, I will be putting dry shampoo in my hair. I use the Not Your Mother's Clean Freak. I already applied some heat protectant. I'm gonna... So just obviously applying this to the regrowth area. I try not to touch it too much while I spray it just so everything can get soaked in. And while that is doing its magic, I'm going to start curling the rest of my hair. I'm sectioning off like the bottom part of my hair, which is the longest. Just brushing that through again to make sure my hair is not tangly. So the way I like to style my shag is to make sure everything is pulled away from my hair. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I use my straightener to curl my hair because I find it easier. So I just put the straightener facing down and just twist. I'm not like a hairstylist or anything, so I don't know how to explain. And then I'll just do some twisties to help it form its shape. I don't really care if it's not that curly down here just because I'm kind of looking for some length still and it's not going to be seen too much. 
my hair still has a little bit of wave from how it was styled before. So now I'm just going to take out the short parts of my hair. You guys might have more hair than me, so this parting might look a little different. You might have to do another section, but this is just what I do since I have some thinner hair. I also like having a messy look, so if you're looking to ha have like a perfect style, then watching this probably isn't <laughs> the best, but. I feel like most shags aren't really, really put together anyway. So again, following the pattern of curling away. And twisting just to give it a little extra hold. I don't worry about the back side of my head having too much curl just because I like it to be curlier in the front and a little looser in the back. I feel like it gives more of like a natural wavy look. So like, see for instance, like my sideburn area, this is where I like to get it a lot curlier. Just cause I think it's cuter this way. I don't know that didn't look that cute, so I'm gonna redo it. All right, it has like a bunch of different curls going on, but that's okay. And so my hair will just be done like this and I'll just pick out pieces that I think could use an extra curl. Just, they're looking a little too straight. No hetero. All right, I'm kind of satisfied with that. The only curling iron I have is like a tapered wand that was like popular in 2013, so. I don't really like the tapered curl look anymore, which is why I use my straightener for styling my hair. If you did have like a barrel wand with no taper, I feel like that'd be really nice for your shag but I just don't feel like spending money on that because I have what works for me. So the side's coming out a lot more earlier and PC, which is cute. All right, so we got some waves going. So we'll take down the top part. I like to go for a middle part, so we're gonna try and find that the best as we can. Not too picky, of course, because I don't know, I'm lazy. My brush is in the other room, that's why I'm using this round brush. Um, you should use probably a regular brush. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna show you how I curl my bangs, even though they are in a nice format right now. So I try to separate it by like top and bottom layer, just because I find it easier to manage that way. So I'll just twist up my top bangs and clip them back. While curling your bangs, it's important to kind of go and create like a C form. I mean, if you like straight bangs, you could do that, but I guess since I really like short, short bangs, that is why I do that. And if you want towards like the sides of your bangs or like the sides of your head, you can curl them and like kind of twist them outwards just so they lay a little different and kind of form a wave. And then I leave them be, I do not touch them until I'm done with the top layer of my bangs, just because I want them to cool down a bit. So I'll find that middle part again. I'm gonna go in smaller sections for the top, just because I want to be able to change their destination. So here is like a side bang, so I can just curl it that way, give it a little formation. And then I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit while I do the rest of my hair, just because I think, because if you brush it out before it's done cooling, then you're just gonna lose all of its shape again. And then starting with the back of my head, I'm going in like smaller sections, just so I can make sure I get the curls that I want. It's really important to get the texture and style you want on the top of your head, since it's gonna be most visible which is why I don't really care about how the bottom of my hair looks. Because the most important thing of the shag is the top. While you're doing this, you can also pull out other sections of hair that are too straight and curl them to your desire. When you're curling up the straight with a flat iron, it's really important to go slow because that is how you get curls. Cause if you go too fast, then you're just like straightening your hair. 
And of course, on the top layer, you're always curling away just to get that nice flow. And then I'm gonna curl my sideburns again because they're not curly enough for me. All right, well, I'm gonna finish the rest off camera because this is gonna take forever. Wow, I'm looking spectacular. So here's my hair all curled before I style it. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush out my bangs a little just to kind of make sure they're in the place I want it. I want them to be. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I don't really touch my curls. I like them to just be themselves. If you have hairspray, you could use that. I don't have any at the moment. So this is the most I'm gonna be doing. You could totally tease the top of your hair if you want to. Um, I've been using this product lately. My hairdresser gave it to me. It's called Techni Art Super Dust. It is a volume and texturizing powder by L'Oreal. I've never heard or used any products like this before. So if anyone has like cruelty free um, dupes or things, please leave them below. I will mainly apply this to my regrowth area and you really don't need that much. Um, I have like in hair, like I've mentioned 95 other times before in this video. So volume is super important to me. So I'm just applying a dash of this and little sections of my regrowth area. My memory card got full in the middle of me speaking, so I applied this to the regrowth of my hair just to get some volume. So I'm just going to go with my fingers and activate the powder and kind of mess up my hair just because shags are supposed to be messy and grunge and glamorous. So I'm gonna make sure we look like all that. And I feel like once you get scrunching, you can kind of pull out your curls and style everything the way you want to. I'm so fucking happy with my hair right now. It looks amazing. So I like to pull some curls forward and I'm pretty satisfied with how I look right now. If you are at this stage and you see pieces that you want to be curled, you can go ahead and touch that up. If you have some hairspray, you can totally put that in or some texturizing spray, that'd be awesome. But this is how my shag is looking. Yep, that's what my hair looks like. I'm getting my hair done in a couple weeks, so this regrowth shall be on soon. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned some tips on how to style a shag. And if you have not already, make sure to like and subscribe. Adios.